Look, some things may be true even if Donald Trump said them. Only now are we allowed to mention that perhaps this lab leak started in Wuhan and was covered up by the Chinese government because Trump's gone now. If you think that Trump can't ride that hobby horse back to the White House. I eat no for breakfast. (laughs) Over the weekend, Kamala Harris did an interview with Mika Brzezinski on MSNBC. And and the, the MSNBC crew is just, the, I mean, when we talk about in the tank, they are in the tank. I mean, let me begin with this. Joe Scarborough says that Joe Biden is returning the United States to normalcy, which is just insane. I'm sorry, there is no way that Joe Biden has done anything to return America to normalcy. If things, if anything, things have gotten even more wild in terms of policy. See, the thing about Donald Trump is that his policies were actually relatively normal. He himself, in terms of personal behavior, not super normal. His policies, pretty normal. The Biden administration, Joe Biden is wandering about, wandering into household objects and knocking them over. He's chasing his dog and breaking his foot by trying to grab its tail or something. But he's pushing radical policy. Joe Scarborough is in favor of the radical policy so long as it comes along with this veneer of normalcy of of Grandpa Joe wandering around shouting at the clouds. It's not good for this country to be talking about politics 24 hours. Say that's not who we are. Fighting about politics. Well, or even talking about politics, obsessing about politics. People looking at MSNBC or Fox 24 hours a day or CNN 24 hours a day. I feel like, you know, like, you know then to Ferris Bueller, what are you still doing here? Go out, <laughs> like do something, get out, you know. And Donald Trump had people talking about Donald Trump, including us, 24 hours a day. I think this return to normalcy it cannot be overstated. There is no return to normalcy. That's the point. There's no return to normalcy. But Joe Biden is an effective face for, a la- for, for a, the, the false return to normalcy. Because the minute he is gone and Kamala Harris is president, all of this bursts right back out into the open because she is just terrible at this. Here she was with Mika. Now, it is, it, she, she's been using this line. And it is an obnoxious line. I eat no for breakfast. I don't even know what that means. I eat no for breakfast. Okay, but here she was. She was she was trotting out the, the feminist shtick, I am woman, hear me roar, or some such. And she says this line again to Mika Brzezinski. And then she laughs hysterically at her own joke. I mean, oh my God. It, Democrats are so lucky that Joe Biden is president and that she is not, my goodness. I eat no for breakfast. Mm -hmm. She waits for the laugh. No Um, laugh. So have I been told many times during my career um, things from, oh, you're too young. It's not your turn. They're not ready for you. Um, you, No one like you has done it before. I've heard all of those things many times over the course of my career, but I didn't listen. And I would encourage anyone who's been told that, whatever their gender, to not listen because, again, don't be encumbered by the inability of others to see the potential of who you are. I eat no for breakfast. I didn't <laughs> listen. This sounds very male and successful. <laughs> You'll recall that this is not the first time she's used this line. She used it with Jane Pauley with CBS this morning. Uh, this is a couple of months ago. The media, my goodness. I, you can't stop trying to make Fetch a thing. Stop trying to make Kamala Harris a thing. She's not a thing. Okay, no one is interested in Kamala Harris presidency. The only reason she was picked is because Joe Biden felt that in order to shore up the black vote, he needed a black VP candidate. He did not hide the ball on this. He said it quite openly. And so now you're stuck with this. I mean, they're going to have to, it's going to be like El Cid. They're going to staple Joe Biden to a horse and ride his corpse around to prevent Kamala Harris from becoming president. She's just this bad at this. I was raised to understand many people will tell you it is impossible, but don't listen I mentor a lot of people and I tell them that there will be people who will say it's not your turn, it's not your time, no one like you has done it. And I'll tell them, and don't you listen. And then I will go on to tell them, I eat no for breakfast. (laughs) Oh, no. And she's laughing at her own joke and Jane Pauley is going, oh. Okay, you're not going to make Kamala Harris a thing. So they're deeply reliant on this old codger, Joe Biden, right? We all know this. And here is the thing. The more the media do this stuff, the more the media refuse to cover the issues that are actually at play, the more they just repeat the narratives that are pushed by Democrats, the more they're opening the door for, wait for it, wait for it, Donald Trump. Okay, I know, I haven't mentioned Trump's name for a while. You know why? Because he hasn't been relevant since he left the presidency. But there is very little doubt at this point that there is a very good shot that, Joe, that, that Donald Trump runs for the presidency again. And the case that he is going to make is not going to be a case 
based on the rigging of the vote in 2020. The case he's going to be making is that the entire media are a propaganda outlet for the Democratic Party, and they've been covering for radical policy, and you have been paying the price. And honestly, he's going to have a pretty good case. He's going to say that animus for him meshed with animus for the American people, that the media cared less about the American people suffering. They cared less about the truth than they did about going after Donald Trump. And he has plenty of grounds to do that between the, the Democratic Party and the media combining to push a radical racial agenda that does not comport with reality, blowing up stories that are non-stories into major national stories in order to press forward the narrative that America requires deep systemic change, or whether it is the media actively covering up the malfeasance of China in the, in the spread of coronavirus. Trump is going to say, listen, they hated, this was his case before, and it's twice as good now. He's going to say, they hated me, not because they hated me, but because they hated you. Or at the very least, they hated me so much that they didn't care about you. And you paid the price. The media for a year covered up the fact that there is a very good shot that coronavirus leaked from a Wuhan lab. I mean, absolutely covered up. Social media would ban you and, and suspend you if you so much as suggested that this lab leak theory was real, was reality. And now the media are admitting it. Now that Trump is gone, they're admitting it. So what changed? The answer is nothing. Trump is gone. So now they can admit the agenda. Here is Jonathan Carl on ABC News admitting as much. He says, yeah, you know what? Probably we shouldn't have ignored that because some things might have been true even if Trump said them. But here's the point. They did not give a damn about the truth. They only cared about how much they hated Trump. And now that Biden's in there, they still don't care about the truth. All they care about is covering their ass. So now they can come out the other side and say, well, at least we were honest when, it, when the time came, we were honest. Yeah, bull crap. Yes, I think a lot of people have egg on their face. This was an idea uh, that was first put forward by Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State, Donald Trump. And look, some things may be true even if Donald Trump said them. And there was, because Trump was saying so much else that was just out of control and because he was, uh, you know, making a, a, a frankly racist appeal talking about Kung flu and, and the China virus, his notion that, that, that put forward that this may have, or he said flatly that this, this came from that lab, was widely dismissed. But actually, there's some real reason. We don't know, by the way. We still don't know. I mean, notice all the hedging there. Even now, members of the media can't just say it was a reasonable theory. It's all about Trump. Why is it all about Trump? Because it was never about the truth. It was always about oppositional politics. Here's the New York Times David Leonhardt saying the same thing. We never should have killed the lab leak theory. Yeah, you shouldn't have. That's correct. But because Tom Cotton said it, you decided to kill the lab leak theory because all you care about is whatever the Democratic agenda is today. That's it. I think people made this mistake. I think um, a lot of people on the political left and a lot of people in the media made this mistake. They said, wow, if Tom Cotton is saying something, it can't be true, or they assumed that. And that's not right. Tom Cotton does deal in misinformation about things like election fraud. He said some things that are just wrong. But that doesn't mean that everything he says is wrong. And it seems like a lot of people, including a lot of people in the media, leaped to dismiss the lab leak theory because of where it was coming from. And the reality is we don't yet know how COVID started. Yet yeah, no bleep. And it's not just that. OK, here's a headline from The New York Times, July 29th, 2020, from Nicholas Kristof, the opinion columnist. Help me find Trump's anarchists in Portland. The president has his politically driven narrative. And then there's reality. Help me find the anarchists. Right. This was the line. I remember there were, there were journalists who literally went to Portland and they sat in the park and they're like, I don't see any anarchists here. I don't see anything bad happening here. And because Trump was focusing in on the fact that Black Lives Matter was involved in violence and because he was focusing in on the fact that the Black Lives Matter leadership was, in fact, anti-Semitic and he was focusing in on the fact they were Marxist and he was focusing in on the fact that the, the anarchists in Portland were, in fact, committing acts of anarchy, the entire media decided not to cover it. And only now are they coming out and they're like, oh, you know what? I guess probably we should cover it now. Article today, Washington Post, anarchists and an increase in violent crime hijacked Portland social justice movement. Quote, the church on the edge of the city was built to hold thousands. And on this drizzly day, the pews of Manor House were filled with hundreds of mourners scattered throughout the broad high ceiling chamber to comply with pandemic rules. Nearly all of them were black. They had gathered to memorialize Jalen Yoakum, 33, whose body lay in a clear casket at the front of the stage. The wounds on his face had been brushed over. A blue suit and white open collar shirt hid the rest of his scars from the daylight shots that killed him in a pizza restaurant parking lot this month. Portland is a white city, overwhelmingly so. African-Americans account for just 6% of the population. But it is black people, such as Yoakum, an aspiring union electrician, who are dying at near historic rates and filling churches with grief. On May 12th, Yoakum, a father of two young boys, became the city's 30th homicide victim this year. That is five times the number recorded during the same period in 2020, a frightening pace that could see more slayings here by the end of the year than in the past four decades. 
After months of social justice activism that made Portland a vivid, sometimes violent focal point for a nation debating the same issues around police accountability and reform, the movement here has splintered into bickering groups at odds over tactics, goals, and an overall direction for how to make the city safer, with the police force still at the debate's bitter center. The sharpening conflict between rising violent crime and efforts to reduce the size of police departments has played out across the American West throughout this pandemic year. Now cities such as Portland have retrenched. So have Oakland, Berkeley, L.A., and several other influential cities on the issue. The nightly confrontations with police and federal agents deployed here by President Donald Trump have been replaced by a kind of generational hopelessness, a tenuous sense of security on, across an under-policed city, and a return to an old-school style of gun violence reminiscent of a tit-for-tat cycle of deadly reprisals almost always among young men of color. Oh, weird. But you didn't report on this at all for a year because to report on it would have been to acknowledge that Trump was right. Okay, the same thing is happening with regard to BLM. There's an entire article in the New York Times today about how the support for Black Lives Matter has dropped precipitously. Who do they blame? Well, they decline. first of all, views of BLM dropped across every single racial group in America. Why? Because it turns out that BLM protests all too often turn into riots. Okay, but the Times instead blames the GOP. The article in the New York Times by Jennifer Chudy and Hakeem Jefferson, they say, the precipitous decline in support mirrors the increased politicization of the issue by elites. In the days and weeks following Floyd's death, Republican politicians quickly turned attention away from the actions of a murderous police officer to those individuals protesting the injustice. Or, um, no, actually, BLM rioters injured police officers in 72% of cities that held BLM protests across the U.S. and Canada, according to the major cities' chiefs' association. The property damage cost up to $2 billion, and the riots left at least 25 people dead, including retired policeman David Dorn. Maybe that had something to do with the drop in popularity, as the Daily Wire points out. But no, according to the media, only now are we allowed to mention that BLM is not all that popular. Only now are we allowed to mention that Antifa is, in fact, a violent group. Only now are we allowed to mention that there was chaos in Portland. And only now are we allowed to mention that perhaps this lab leak started in Wuhan and was covered up by the Chinese government because Trump's gone now. If you think that Trump can't ride that hobby horse back to the White House, let me suggest that you've got this sucker all wrong. And that when you spend years covering for the Democratic agenda by just referring to it as sort of the new normal or return to normalcy, you have made a category error. Joe Biden was elected by the American people in order to restore a sense of normalcy. He was not elected in order to effectuate radical change. And yet he took that as a mandate to effectuate radical change, increasing the budget by a full 50 percent, blowing out the spending to to levels we have not seen since World War II. He, he has pushed a racially polarizing brand of politics that has been unseen in the country, seriously, for decades. And the media have covered for all of that. There is a burgeoning backlash, and it is going to hurt the Democrats. It is coming for them, and it should come for them. Because what they've done here is incredibly, incredibly ugly. They've castigated the systems of the United States as racist without reference to what in the systems is actually racist. They've castigated Americans as racist. They've made up stories about Americans being racist without actually making sure that there's any underlying fact to it. And when the, the image that, that is being pushed by the media is so disconnected from the actual reality, all on the basis of we have to make hay while the sun shines, all on the basis of we have to prop this old coot up until he can get done what he needs to get done, and waiting in the wings is Kamala Harris, I got to say, I am not optimistic for the future of the Democratic Party here over the course of the next couple of years, and neither should they be, which might be the reason why they're pushing so hard so fast right now. But the backlash is coming, and it is well-deserved. Did you know that every single like creates one additional leftist tier? That is just science.